Hey everyone, the name is Rector, and I keep telling people there is a difference between behavior and personality. If you know a person is reserved or shy, you only know that they are shy in this situation or when speaking to this person or at this personal encounter. If you feel like somebody is stubborn or narrow-minded, you only know that they're currently being stubborn and narrow-minded, but you don't know how they really are. So if you want to know how a person really is, well, tough luck, you're gonna have to ask some questions and what you're gonna have to find out is how does that person feel, what do they value, what do they like, what are their interests, what are their hobbies, what are their values and what do they believe in. So you're gonna have to ask some questions and I'm gonna talk about those questions and I'm gonna help you recognize every personality trait in a nutshell, some basic hints, things to look for with every personality dimension in the Myers-Briggs personality type indicator. Starting with introversion and extroversion, you'll want to ignore the theories about reservedness or about shyness or outgoingness. It's not really necessarily about that and that can mislead you quite a few times. What you want to look for instead is uh, person that is territorial and introverted versus a person that is environmental and extroverted. So what you'll find is introverts are usually focused on themselves and what they do and their projects and their home or their responsibility or their job. They have this idea of mine. What is mine? What is something I do? What is something I am responsible for? What is something I want to focus on? So introverts come from the perspective of intention, of reason, of uh, home, and of uh, theory. And uh, all of this, there is a stereotype, there's misconception spread around that introverts are thinking types, in a sense. Introverts like to think about life and who they are, and extroverts, they just like to take in, and they just like to perceive, and they don't have any opinions of their own. Yeah, when you read, uh, read a lot of descriptions on extroverted and feeling types, you'll get a lot of stereotypes like believes what everybody else believes, just goes with the crowd, has no opinions of their own. But this is a stereotype and a misconception. What you'll find it really uh, in reality is extroverts tend to have more opinions about their environment. Extroverts tend to have more thoughts about the world around them rather than the world inside them. So their interest is in what's happening around them. The community, the people, the system, nature, the environment around them is the core priority. What do people do? Why do people act this way? What are people doing? What are people up to? What is the community doing? What does the community believe? And what do I think about what the community believes? What do I believe about the people? What do I feel about the nature around me and about my environment? And what you'll find is extroverts have a lot of opinions about the world around them. They have a lot of opinions about other people and they have a lot of thoughts about their job and their people working there and their situation and their friends and their family. So they have strong conceptions of their networks and of people around them. Not necessarily always positive. Sometimes they'll have... A, negative opinions and sometimes they'll have positive opinions. That really depends on mindset and mood. So what you'll find is, of course, introverts are more focused on themselves. So that means introverts tend to have a strong conception of what they are meant to do. So they often believe there is something they are meant to do, something that is theirs, something that is their responsibility. So introverts tend to have a strong conception of their job or their duty. You can see ISTJs, they often have a really strong conception of their duty, you know my duty, what am I supposed to fulfill, what am I supposed to do? And they derive this from, of course, their history. You can also derive this from your future, your conception or vision or your ideas. And you can derive it from basically your inner state. Yeah, introversion is something that starts in the inner state and then flows outwards. Uh, introverts want to manifest how they see themselves in the world around them. So they want to realize themselves. Introverts are engaged in realization product, projects that can often be very outer oriented. So they have an idea of who they are and what they intend to do or how they want the world to function logically. And then they are oriented with making the world adhere to these principles or to make th these intentions manifest themselves so that people around them will recognize it and so that other people will realize it. And it has to do with this uh, desire to manifest the inner state in the outer world. 
Extroverts come from the other picture of basically manifesting and pulling and taking in the world around them and making it adhere to and fit with their inner state. This means wanting the world around them to align with their beliefs and their values and their opinions, wanting the people around them to believe in and share their beliefs, wanting people around them to think the way they do, wanting other people around them to uh, act and to be along and to go along with their ideas and what they believe in. So an extrovert and intuitive wants everyone around them to be free just as they want to be free. They want and believe everyone needs to be free for myself also to be able to be free. So they believe in and share, want to share information and want to share their values with other people and they want other people to participate and partake in their ideas and their opinion and their uh, beliefs so they want to create a sense of a community or a sense of group or a sense of a free space uh, where anybody can do anything they want that's a priority here extroverts are oriented with uh, how they want the world to be so that's it in a nutshell, the difference between the two. You have to talk to people and you'll figure it out. You'll hear what they are talking about. You'll hear what they're most interested in. Is it themselves? Is it their individuality? Is it their home and their projects? Or is it something that is more outer oriented? Is it the community? Is it a system? Is it how they want the community to be? How they want the system to be? How they want their environment to be? What they want life to be like? Yeah, extroverted and perceiving types, they love to talk about life and life itself. Why do we live? Why, what are we living for? What is the purpose of life? What do we, how do we act and what do we do and what sh should we be doing with life? How should we be manifesting our life? So uh, there is a pull towards the outer world and uh, there is a desire to align the world around them with the inner state. So you want the world to be according to your beliefs as an extrovert. Now intuition and sensing, that comes from another perspective. Intuition is found in the imagination and sensing is found in the immediate and in action. In sensors thinking are interested by primarily action, discipline, history and by nature. So those are the four core priorities. You want the world around you to feel alive, rich and vibrant. You want there to be dynamic. You want things to happen. You want things to happen for real. You want things to be intense, you want them to be there, you want them to be fun, you want them to be engaging, you want them to be captivating, you want there to be a spotlight, you want there to be lights on, you want there to be people there, you want there to be activity and you want uh, the world around you to be alive and you want uh, often some degree of discipline and order in this, you want uh, those people there and that thing there and that place there, you want things in an order and in a structure and you believe there is something firm uh, something stable that we should be organizing and putting together there is uh, you want definitions for things you want things to be clearly defined and you want them to be uh, put so you know what the difference is between different things you want to have some kind of uh, instructions for how things are meant to be and some kind of uh, structure for how things are supposed to be put together you want there to be IKEA manuals you want there to be some kind of uh, thing that is so that's the sensing priority with intuition there is another core for priorities there is for example the desire to have your own thoughts to have your own ideas and to have your own opinions there is the desire towards having options to choose from to want to be presented with options and to want to be able to change your mind to vary yourself to do things differently each time you do it to do something in a new way slightly different always a little bit of a novelty in every pattern you can come from the perspective of independence and having your idea of your own way wanting things to do be done your own way have seeing for yourself how the world could work or how things could be or how you could do something or how you could achieve it having your own idea about how to do something no matter what the instruction books say no matter what the rules say having your own idea of how to get something done and there is the perspective of freedom and that is being able to do what you want to say what you want to express your thoughts to express your ideas to share your ideas and to share your thoughts with other people so ideas and the imagination and abstract is more important here uh, there is something fluid here rather than something formed there is something a little more abstract here rather than something more practical there is something that is a little more airy compared to something that is more firm 
So what are they talking about when you're interviewing a person? What are they talking about? Are they talking about abstract concept? Are they talking about possibility? Are they talking about opportunity? Are they talking about freedom? Are they talking about going their own way in life and making their own career and creating their own uh, projects? Or are they focused on a routine, maintaining a routine, maintaining, maintaining structure, having things to do, having fun? All of that will help you gog a person's real personality type. With feeling and thinking, you have to talk about what a person values. What do they find to be important and meaningful in life? So, looking at feelers, you can divide them into four subsets. So, feelers can find it important to be around people. Feelers can find it important to have emotions. Feelers can have it important to be guided by intentions. To have intentions for things, what you want, things you want to do. Things you feel are important, things you hope for things you think will be important in the future uh, feelers are guided by the perspective of honesty and truth what's your personal truth what's your personal opinion about something what do you feel about something uh, or they can be guided by what do they want to do what do you want to do for other people how do you want to be what kind of a person do you want to be what do you want to do for others how do you want to impact others so kindness or honesty Two core things for feelers, but also intention and harmony, like having a world that aligns with how you believe the world should be and having an inner drive towards harmony and towards wanting the world to fit with your expectations and your ideals. Or having morality and feeling like there are values and morals for how the world should be and how people should treat one another and getting upset when other people don't abide by or agree with these morals. So thinkers, they come from the perspective of objectivity and reason. So having reasons for things, having carefully explained and thought through how something should work, seeing logically a good way for the world to work and wanting the world to ad adhere to these logical principles, wanting the world to, wanting to manifest these logical principles in the world around you, or wanting objectivity as in wanting to think impartially about something and to see something objectively and to notice what gives the best results, to notice what is the most important, to notice what is the smartest move in every situation. Thinking is oriented by thinking and perceiving, which is developing skills and becoming good at something, mastering the world around you. Feeling like the world is under your control. You can solve any problem that comes up. You can deal with anything. You can do something. You can do it excellently. You can do it well. Or having ambition and having a strategy or having a plan for something. Seeing a good way to execute a project. Seeing a smart way to do something. Realizing a way to fulfill something and to get from point A to point B to point C to point D, you know. Uh, clearly defining your goals and what you want to get and how you want to get it and thinking about your resources and how to use your resources to get the right results. Finally, when you're looking at the thinking and feeling, what you're looking at is uh, what is the person primarily guided by and what gives them meaning in life? Is it having feelings or is it having results? Is it... Um, just feeling happy, just being happy in itself, or is it having skills and feeling like you're good at something, or feeling like you're uh, living up to your potential and that you're doing things the way you think are best? When you're looking at judging and perceiving, what you're looking at is uh, goal orientedness versus adaptivity. You're looking at feedback and response versus structure and order so judging types they're all talking about order and they're all talking about how to do something there is an idea of a way to do something and uh, there is one way to do something <laughs> so that's also very important to consider with perceiving there is feedback there is opinions there are options we can look at it that way or we can look at it that way it's all a matter of what option we consider. It's juggling options. It's having a discussion with somebody and one person having one idea and you having another idea. It is that ability to adjust when something happens and to say, maybe let's fix this. Maybe let's change that. Maybe let's improve that. Maybe let's uh, talk about it. Maybe let's discuss this first. Let's see what you feel and what I feel and let's talk about it and see if we can find a solution. It is that ability to act in the moment when that is happening, to jump to the opportunity and to deal with it and to stand there and to take care of it and to be in the heat of battle or in action 
and to get things done. So perceiving is about application. How do I apply an idea or a possibility or a project in this moment with what I have at the hands right now? Judging is what resources do I need to get to achieve this? How can I accomplish this? What can I do to get the job done? How can I get from this uh, idea I have to that vision far away into the future. It is that ability to judge what you want to go towards and how you want to get something done compared to perceiving, which is the ability to perceive different ways to solve a problem. So with judging, what you're talking about is often order and linearity versus in perceiving where it is uh, the ability to uh, think more non-linearly and to think more in different edges and different possibilities. Goals are never clearly defined. It's never quite clear what you want to achieve or what where you want to get with something. It can be, but usually it's not. So you might find yourself as a perceiver wondering where you're going with what you're doing and what the point is of what you're doing. And what you're going to get to when you're looking at introverted and extroverted and judging and perceiving is introverted and those things, those traits, Sure, they're important, they're very important, but they're not interests and they're not values. So it's not like an introvert feels like it's good to operate this way or that it's fun to be that way. It's not like a judger thinks, oh, it's always the best way to be a judger. Or like a perceiver would say, oh, it's always so important and meaningful to be a perceiver. No, for the most part, it's just comfort zone. It's just about how you function in your comfort zone. So judges and perceivers, they're just doing this because it's easy for them. It's easy to be this way. Introverts are just thinking that way because it's easy to start there. And sure, after that, they would probably, they should probably go towards the extroverted. Judges, they think, they think it's easy to focus on and start there. And if they would start the other way, they would probably struggle more and they would feel more stressed. So when you go outside your comfort zone, there is an association with stress and with anxiety and with uncertainty you feel a little more confused or disoriented or you feel a little more out of your normal zone so what i talk about when i talk about personality is behavior is always something you can do and change whatever you like but personality is hardwired so if you stop acting in accordance with your personality suddenly you're not meeting your interests you're not living according to your values and that causes for example shame you know if you're not living in accordance with your values that causes shame and it can cause anxiety too and if you're not living in tune with your interests and with what you find fun and engaging well that causes the stress of anger and frustration with life and the boredom and the struggle like oh what's the point why am i doing this so what you're going to be looking at is how do i how does this person feel Every time I tell people, how do you type another person? You have to look, how did, are they in flow? What do they do in flow? Okay, and that person appears like a sensor. Well, they're forced to do so uh, because they feel forced to be that way, but they don't seem to enjoy what they're doing. Then they can't be sensors. If they don't enjoy engaging in sensing, then they can't be sensors. If they're frustrated and unhappy and miserable engaging in sensing, then they can't be sensors. That's an important time rule. If they're frustrated and hate, uh, feel stressed by old ideas and always think it's boring and never feel like it gives them anything or any fulfillment, they can't really be intuitive. So that's important to consider. Uh, if a person, a feeler, uh, is always uh, working hard and always putting themselves to work and always keeping themselves busy and always trying to be ambitious and always trying to be successful but they always feel a burning sense of shame like they're never doing enough and like they can't they feel proud of anything they do and there's no point in doing it and they suck and they're useless they can't really be thinkers even if they engage in thinking because the thinking does not give them fulfillment or meaning you have to think what does this person find meaningful? If you notice this person that's been working for 50, 60 hours every week, stressing themselves out in thinking, and then suddenly they go out and help a stranger and they feel suddenly proud of themselves. That's a feeler for you. That's uh, where they derive pride, you know, internal pride, real pride. I don't, I'm not saying thinkers can't enjoy this and can't find this great. But usually thinkers will only find this great if it is objectively the smart thing to do. If they can tell that helping this stranger will give some kind of benefit. If they can see that this person will be happy by it and if they can get the results from it. So uh, when you're engaging in your internal, what you find internally interesting and meaningful, you're happy. When you're engaging in things that you don't find happy, you're only going to enjoy it insofar as other people enjoy it and other people seem to like it. 
So that's also, you're as a feeler slaving into thinking, you're constantly thinking, are other people happy with me for doing this? Are other people liking me for doing this? But it's not really making you happy. And that's for thinkers as well. The opposite way is true. If you're constantly trying to be nice to everybody and constantly trying to think about other people's feelings and trying to take care of other people, and you're constantly in that position where you're oriented by, oh, uh, trying to be have discussions with other people about their feelings and struggles and to listen to them and help them. And uh, if you're constantly oriented by the people around you, what do they think? What are they up to? What do they believe in? What are their morals? Are they being moral? Are they living life like the way I want them to? Uh, it's not going to make you happy to live that way. So you have to live in a way that makes you happy. That's the core, most important part of personality psychology, finding a way to live to make you happy. With judging and perceiving and introversion and extroversion is only about managing stress and managing anxiety, learning to manage challenge and more learning to step outside your comfort zone, but also learning to set boundaries for yourself and to respect your comfort zone. Telling yourself, I will do this thing, but I won't do that because that's too much for me right now. I will set the, I will try to set this goal and I'll try to follow it, but I will only do it for a little bit and then we'll take a break and then I will engage, engage in what I like to do. So just learning to step outside your comfort zone and learning to enjoy it and talking with people while you do and telling people, yeah, I like to, I can do that. Sure, if you need me to, I can do that. But uh, if I could, I would prefer to do that. Just learning to set those boundaries for you. So, so knowing that you know your type in a nutshell and you know how to think. Take care of yourself, love yourself, and uh, love the people around you. Let them be the way they are and let yourself be the way you are. That's the best way to happiness. Understand your personality, understand yourself, and understand other people. Thank you for tuning in and watching this video. Thank you, everyone, for being subscribers and for, and hope to see you all.